This is Lee from Crash Test Hobby showing you how to build the Pelican Tail and Fuselage. I'm going to start by showing you how to make a goop hinge. Notice how strong and flexible this hinge line is on the EPP foam. Very strong. You can't do this with many tails on airplanes. We're going to start by pinning the tail surfaces to cardboard with the beveled edges on top. You want them barely touching. You don't want glue squeezing down through the hinge line as you apply the glue. Taking the goop glue, put a bead of glue down along the hinge line and spread it very thin with a razor blade. If you get too much, it will be stiff and the hinge line won't work. If you see dry spots, fill them in and put a second layer on top. It will take three to four hours to dry. We're now going to trim the bottom back of the rudder up one and a quarter inches and then extend the front part just past the hinge line so that the elevator will have room to move on the back of the plane. The rear of the fuselage already has a slot cut in it. We're going to trim three inches off the rear of the fuselage and remove that piece of foam and then mark the center line on the horizontal stabilizer and just make sure all the parts fit. You can see where that gap on the rudder leaves a space for the elevator to move. We recommend the pod mounted motor on the plane but we have also made it so you can put a nose mounted motor on it if you want. We're going to glue two Formica layers to the front of the plane they will act like a bumper for the pod mounted motor version 2 and protect the battery in the plane. Apply the glue to the foam when you do that so that uh, it won't cool before you get done. You're now going to cut two slits in the top of the fuselage, 3 quarter inch deep. They're back 5 inches and 13 inches. You're going to roll the dowels in as you press them into the slits. I pull them out and enlarge the holes slightly with a soldering iron so that the dowels will sit exactly where I want them. We're now going to mark where the pod will be installed. The pod is against the back of the front dowel. This gives it extra strength so that in an accident it doesn't rip through the foam. After make cutting with a soldering iron, I take a screwdriver and enlarge and deepen the hole. If you have put LED lights in the plane, make sure you do not damage the lights at this point. This plane actually has LEDs installed. The pod will need to be at 90 degrees to the top of the fuselage and aimed at the left front corner of the fuselage to compensate for prop torque. After you've got your basic holes cut, let's remove the parts and go back and apply some bidirectional tape around the front of the fuselage. This makes the fuselage strong enough that it just doesn't tear and makes it so that your plane will last. Make relief cuts as needed so the tape can lay flat. Now you want to put the reinforced tape back to about the center of gravity. That way you're not adding weight that has to be compensated for in the nose of the plane. Open the holes with a knife or with a soldering iron. And just double check the fit again. I like to put a wrap of the bi-directional tape also around the rear dowel in the fuselage just so it can't tear out when you stretch rubber bands up and over the wing. And then once again I melt the holes open and check for fit. Make sure that they're aligned with the fuselage and that they're square. We're now going to laminate the fuselage. We do this before we glue those pieces in so they're out of the way. 
starting on the top of the fuselage with an iron that's about 200 degrees in temperature. I laminate the over the top of the tape and in this case you can see the wires that go to the LED lights that I brought up through a hole. And then I wrap down and around and laminate the bottom of the plane. And as you can see, there are the LEDs that are in the bottom of this plane. Wrap smoothly around the corners. And if your iron's the right temperature, the laminate will lay flat for you. Then after you make cuts, just seal the edges down. After you're done with your basic wrap, turn the iron temperature up and you can seal everything so the laminate is, laminate is stuck better. We're now going to trim out the, where the horizontal stabilizer will go. You don't want laminate where you're going to glue it on. So I'm leaving the foam exposed on the back of the pipe. We're now going to cut out a box in the fuselage to install your receiver and speed control and your LED light controller if you're using it. The box I'm cutting in this plane is three quarter inch wide by six inches long by an inch and a half deep. Remove the laminate and the E-tape that's over the top. I actually cut right up to the back of the pod. Now using a metal straight edge and my soldering iron, I cut, make a cut along the edge of the opening. You want the sides of the fuselage to remain as thick as possible to keep the fuselage strong. The metal straight edge keeps the iron from overcutting into the parts of the fuselage you don't want to cut. And then I make some relief cuts so I can use some pliers and just pull the foam plugs out. This foam is so surprisingly durable, you couldn't do this with any other type of foam. I'm sealing the edges down, but then going back and using my straight edge, I'm cutting another layer out so I can get deep enough for the radio gear to fit. And using a screwdriver, I scrape out the bottom of the radio box and smooth it out so that it looks a little better. At this point, I am cutting a hole for the battery. I'm using a 1350 battery on this particular plane. You want it as far forward as you can get it. The most planes like this tend to want to be tail heavy pull the laminate and the e-tape off of the front so that the iron can cut through. And using the same metal straight edge technique, cut through and make some relief plugs that you can pop out through the hole. You want your battery so it's totally enclosed in the fuselage. Once again, I'm using a metal straight edge so I don't overcut with the body uh, of the soldering iron. And once again, pull the plugs out. Your battery should fit tight in the hole. I do install Velcro to help hold the battery in place. And right here, I punched a hole to make a mark and then make a slot for three quarter inch Velcro that will go through and wrap around the battery and keep it in the nose of the plane. Using a little alcohol, I clean the marker off of the front. Now we're going to glue the horizontal stabilizer in place. As you press it into place, get your square and make sure that they line up 90 degrees. Also make it sure it's the same distance off the table. You don't want it sloped to the right or to the left. A little extra glue there will help hold it in place. Now using my soldering iron, I punch some holes through the laminate on the back of the fuselage. This is to give the glue access to the foam underneath the laminate. Using my glue gun, I squeeze glue down into those holes and then put it on the tail, which is not laminated. And then I put the rudder in place. You want the rudder to 
be vertical with the table, but also and also don't let it be bent on the back of the plane, so that it needs to be straight. Thanks for watching. Thanks for buying our kids. This is Lee from CrashJustHobby.com.